Coming up on this episode, the Warriors respond from their embarrassing blowout loss to the Celtics on Sunday with the blowout victory of their own against the Milwaukee Bucks at Chase and are led by a starring performance from Trace Jackson Davis in the second half. Welcome back to the Golden State with Mates podcast after the Warriors got a 125-90 to blowout victory against the Milwaukee Bucks at Chase Center on Wednesday night. Just what the franchise needed after the embarrassing 52-point defeat to the Boston Celtics on Sunday. I need to apologize in advance because I've got no notes written down here whatsoever. So whatever I say here over the next 15, 20 minutes, however long it may be, is going to be purely off the cuff, is going to be purely based on my memories of what I just watched over the last few hours and pure emotion, which I think is actually a good thing based on what we just saw from Trace Jackson Davis because when you see what he produced there in that second half for Golden State, there is an emotion. There's an emotional connection. There's an emotional product that emanates from watching a guy grow into being an NBA player in front of your very eyes against one of the best teams in the league and specifically against one of the best players in the league, I might say the second best player behind Nikola Jokic. To see what TJD did in the second half against Giannis Antetokounmpo, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And it does provide like an emotional attachment kind of thing when you, as I said, when you can see a guy grow in front of your very eyes and turn in from a rookie, which he still is, to very much a rotation piece on a team that still has ambitions to do something this season. And based on this performance, I think, you know, full credit to the Warriors for what they did here and what they've done over the past 20 games or so in getting themselves back into the playoff picture and into a position where they could attack the playoffs should they make it. So, I mean, let me set the stage here for you. First half, Warriors put up 40 points in the first quarter, remembering that they put up 38 in the first half in total against the Celtics on Sunday. 40 first quarter points, had 78 in the first half, led by 20, shot over 60% from the floor and from three-point range. Steph had 17, JK had 16, CP six points and six assists. I think, in the first half. Everything going right. The ball movement was absolutely beautiful. Classic Warriors basketball, kind of working inside and out. Uh, I think they shot, was it 11 of 16 or 11 of 17 from three in that first half? Everything going down. Absolutely unbelievable. But, of course, there's always in the back of your mind, there's that thought of, we've seen this before. And, of course, Milwaukee come out, start of the third quarter, and go on a run, cut the the deficit to six pretty quickly in that third quarter. Uh, and I'm sure the anxiety inside Chase Center and the anxiety for me watching on was certainly lifted as a result of that. Because as I said, you look at it and you think, "Geez, we've, we've seen this before." The Warriors, what seven times I think this season we're up to where they've had 15 plus point leads and lost. Uh, they've had a couple, I think, where they've been up 20-plus at halftime. I think the Kings and the Clippers was a back-to-back games earlier in the season from memory that uh, they're up they're up big, up 20-plus at halftime and end up losing. So we've, we've seen this before, and yeah, the Bucs were, were making a surge there in the third, and enter TJD, who had been okay for, I think he had four points, two rebounds in the first half, something like that. Okay, but nothing overly significant. And then in a couple of sequences, essentially turned the momentum of the game. So he blocks Giannis twice on the one possession. And then not only that, but goes down the length of the floor and finishes with a hammer jam. And then two minutes later, essentially the same thing. Pins a Giannis layup off the backboard for a third block on Giannis in the space of two, and a, two, two and a half minutes. And then goes down the other end for a slam. It was... Like, you... I vividly cannot remember when a young warrior, big man, made such a play. (laughs) Or made... Or had two sequences like that against one of the best players in the world. I mean, the Warriors have had shot-blocking centers over this last dynastic decade. You know, Andrew Bogut, JaVale McGee, 
Festus is yearly, if you if you want to say like they've had some capable shot blocking centers, but in terms of young, up and coming, rising centers, James Wiseman was the one, and unfortunately, and I don't want to bring James into this into this conversation, but. You look at what TJD is doing right now, and it was quite ironic that Bob Myers was on the broadcast, and obviously uh, he got a shout out uh, during the was it the second quarter, I think, with a, a video montage and a, a huge uh, applause um, from the Chase Center crowd, which is much deserved. But it's kind of ironic, you see, you know, Mike Dunleavy's first move essentially as general manager was well, yes, there was the the Chris Paul Jordan pull trade, but of course the draft was essentially a week after he um, came into the job and he gets Brandon Pajemski, who was back in the starting lineup again tonight, and Trace Jackson Davis with the 57th overall pick. Unbelievable. And yes, he's, you know, four-year college career. He's now 24 years old. We expect him to be more developed than, you know, young rookies who are 19, 20 years of age without the college experience. We get that. But it's still, it's pretty special what he did in this game. It is really special. And so it just completely turned the momentum of the game. Like the Bucks got within six, had all the momentum, and then TJD does that. The Warriors go back up. Was it 12, I think, or 11 or 12 at the end of the third? Still enough breathing room without being absolutely comfortable. And then it was another another young player in Moses Moody who in the first play of the fourth quarter Picks Damian Lillard, strips him, a uh, bit of a fight for the ball. Dame falls to the ground, Mose picks it up, gets a slam. And then on the next possession, CP3 finds Draymond for his ninth assist, makes an M1 layup over Patrick Beverly. All of a sudden, the margin is 16 points again, uh, and the Warriors are rolling. And that was really built off what TJD did in that third quarter. So it was absolutely an unbelievable last 18 minutes of the game, you could say, after that Bucks run for what TJD did to rebuild the momentum. The Warriors ended up winning that fourth quarter 32-9, to nine, which is quite insane. Like They kept Milwaukee to nine points in that fourth quarter, which meant only 90 for the game. And, you know, Draymond hit a couple of threes. Steph hit a couple more threes. He finished with a, a game-high 29. Everything was rolling in that fourth quarter. And really, aside from that six, six seven minutes to start the third, this was a fantastic performance, a much-needed performance on the back of what we saw on Sunday. But even though Steph had 29, I think he had, was it eight rebounds, five assists as well. JK was excellent, 20 points, 16, as I said, in the first half. I think he had four rebounds, two assists, two steals, three blocks himself. So really stuffed the stat sheet there, nine of 14 shooting. Uh, but even though those two guys combined for 49 points, I thought TJD was just the the player of the game the game-defining impact that he produced in that third quarter, it's its special. It really is to see a guy, a young guy, do that against one of the best players in the world. I, I'm, I'm lost for words, really. I'm legitimately lost for words for how good that sequence was in the third quarter. And so he finishes, I mean, he had another block late in the fourth quarter, 15 points, six rebounds, four blocks of steal, seven of eight shooting, plus 20 uh, just an unbelievable performance. Unbelievable performance from TJD and further solidifies his place as the backup center. It was actually interesting. So Draymond got a couple of early fouls uh, against Giannis and including an, and a technical foul as well in the first quarter. And then Loon was actually the first one in off the bench. And I thought, hmm, geez, like really? And then credit to Steve. He obviously went to TJD shortly after that uh, in the first half. And then in the second half, he was the first big off the bench again, and that just needs to continue to be the case going forward. Loon can still play a little bit. I, I actually want to give Steve some credit. Aside from aside from that move of Loon being uh, off the bench first before TJD in the first quarter, I thought his rotations were pretty spot on in this one. And that includes playing Andrew Wiggins, who was obviously his first game back in you know, you know, after the four-game absence, playing him less than 14 minutes for the game, which... It's interesting. Now, was there a minutes restriction? There's probably a minutes restriction of sorts, but I doubt there was a minutes restriction of 14. Otherwise, what's the point of playing the guy? However, like Moses, again, you look at the box score and you see Moses Moody, what did he have? Like four four points. This is where I'm going to actually have to check. I think Moses had four points, three rebounds or something like that. Uh, what did 
No, six points, four rebounds, an assist, a steal, and a block. Three of seven shooting. So you look at that in just under 21 minutes and you think, yeah, that, that's okay. But again, the defensive impact, I I actually don't know what's happened to Moses, to be honest. It's, I don't know, but it's not him. Because all of a sudden in these last five games, since he got that opportunity with Wiggs going out due to the personal reasons, Moses has turned into this randomly elite perimeter defender and like on-ball perimeter defender. And I always saw him as an off-ball guy who could use his length to get in passing lanes, uh, could be disruptive in that way. But I always had a question mark over his lateral quickness, his ability to stay in front of um, quicker guards out on the perimeter, um, fast guards out on the perimeter. So that was the major issue for me. But since he's got this opportunity, he's all of a sudden taking on the mantle as you know one of the primary point of attack defenders. And we saw that against Damian Lillard in the fourth quarter where he had, a, again, a couple of fantastic defensive possessions signified obviously by that first one in the fourth quarter where he got that pick and went the other end for a steal. And then you look at the end of the game and he's a plus 22 uh, or game high plus 22. And so you look at Moody's impact and you think like that guy should just, that's what he should be playing 20, 21 minutes a game. And it's got to come from somewhere. And I don't think Wiggs is going to continue playing less than 14 minutes. Don't get me wrong. Like that's not going to happen, but he might be, there might be nights where he plays 18 minutes and Perhaps most nights he doesn't play any more than 25. I thought for what it's worth, I thought Wiggs' defense on Dame in the first half was actually pretty okay as well. Didn't really let him get off the leash too much. Uh, so really Dame, Dame had a bit of a stretch in the third quarter there where he started heating up during the Bucks revival. But aside from that, didn't do a whole lot. Uh, Giannis threatened as he does, but then TJD happened. So he kind of was quietened down there. Um, he had 23 points, which based on his what season average of over 30, I think is, is quite underwhelming. So the Warriors did well there. But the the Moses Moody kind of pri- uh, point of attack, perimeter defense, that agenda here over the last few games has quietly but quite loudly at the same time become a real thing, which has been a little bit weird, but very, very good. And if he's going to continue to defend like he is, that means that he can be an impactful player even when his shot's not necessarily falling. And so, again, today he goes 3 of 7 shooting. It's okay. It's nothing special. But because of the defense and the value he brings there, it really shows up in the fact that Steve's willing to play him nearly 21 minutes with with Wiggins playing less than 14. And, of course, as I said, the, the game high plus 22 plus minus. So full credit to Moses. And, again, him and TJD, major stories from this game. And, and as I have kept saying here that, you know, the more that the, that, this, that Steve Kerr and Golden State lean into the younger players, the better it seems to be because, you know, JK was excellent again. Pods was okay. Um, hit a couple of threes. Again, had a couple of games off to the the uh, with the knee absence or the knee issue, sorry. So what did he... He had uh, eight points, seven rebounds, three assists, one block, three of seven shooting. He was okay um, for his for his first game back after that knee issue. So we've seen it with Pods and JK, how much they've grown and developed with this extra opportunity. And now I think we're going to see it with Moody and TJD. And it's really exciting times. And it's ironic times that the two timeline plan, the two timeline approach is here. It's unbelievable. It's it's here after an off season where we thought it was going the other way with you know trading out Jordan Poole for, for Chris Paul. And before that, James Wiseman obviously going to Detroit at last year's trade deadline um, to see this come to fruition with Steph still doing what he does with Draymond still doing what he does Clay I think accepting a a, re, a a lesser role obviously but willing to do so at this stage I thought he had a reasonable game 10 points 4 assists that good decision making good shot selection uh, I don't think he took that many shots overall did he let me just again have a look um, yeah 4, four of 7 shooting 2 of 5 so like Clay took seven shots for the game. Again, not forcing things by any means. Didn't have to play a whole lot, 21 minutes. And that's the best thing, I suppose, about this deep rotation is that the Warriors um, can afford to play basically a bunch of guys between 15 and 30 minutes and not really have to stretch anyone out, especially in these kind of blowout games, obviously. But if you look at the game time, so Steph played just under 31 minutes. He'll always be around that 30-minute mark at a minimum potentially up to 35, depending on how the situation of the game is going. But outside of that, the other starters, 
Pods just over 26, Draymond 25, JK 25, Wiggs, as I said, less than 14, Clay 21 off the bench, Loon less than 6 minutes, GP2 16 minutes, CP3 20, Moody just under 21, TJD just under 19, and then Canonias, Santos, Saric, and Robertson got the f- just over four minutes of garbage time. So you see that and you see, you know, basically 10 guys playing between, what, 14 and... 31 minutes. I mean, that's just where the Warriors are at right now. And there's going to be, you know, different games that call for, for different situations, different lineups, whatever else. Uh, but I think this is the this is the 11, right? This is the 11 that Steve will roll with, I think, for the rest of the season. The, the starting five and then CP, Clay, Moses, GP2, and then the combination of TJD and Loon, of which I think TJD will continue to eat up uh, most of those minutes. I think Loon's still going to find himself getting a couple of minutes here and there, um, more more so because of the streak that he's got going. I just don't think Steve wants to, to end that. I've spoken about whether that should end or not, and maybe it should, but I don't think it necessarily will. That's fine. He's still a solid, you know, it's not like Surich, I think, where Surich was really getting to a point where he had to be out of the rotation because he was such a negative defensively and he was no longer shooting the ball well or doing really much productively on offense, so he had to be out of the rotation. As unfortunate it is, as it is, Moody's play over that four-game Wiggins absence was too much to ignore. And I'm as actually going back to before the game, before the starting lineup was announced, I wouldn't have been surprised if Moses actually had started over probably pods because I think uh, Steve mentioned yesterday when it was confirmed that Wiggs was coming back, that he'd be in the starting five. So that left, obviously, the, the two-guard spot to which you could play Moody. Now, maybe that puts a bit more playmaking pressure on Steph and Draymond, a bit more ball handling pressure on those guys. Um, and I think I think Steve likes having pods out there for that aspect and just being another, you know, he just compared himself to Draymond, a Draymond-esque player with the multitude of things he can do out on the floor. But it's going to be really interesting to see in some of these close games moving forward, the closing lineups that the Warriors go with because they have got, like, we've got like 10 options here. I don't think Loon's necessarily going to be closing any games. But other than that, there's 10 blokes that can close. Literally every bloke in the rotation outside Loon can close this game. If you need defense, GP2's an option. Moody is an option depending on if you want that element of point of attack defense while also giving you that more of a shooting threat than GP2. Um, Kaminga, obviously, Steph and Draymond, that three is probably always going to be in the, the closing lineup, although Kaminga, there's been a few games lately where he hasn't been, so that's still maybe a question mark. We know Steve loves CP3 down the stretch of games. Pods is always going to be there. Clay, if they need shooting, is clearly going to be an option. So I was just uh, editing so. this and realised that it had cut off the last few minutes of the episode for one reason or another, so I apologise for that, uh, but I'd practically done with the conversation Anyway, so thank you guys for tuning in once again. It's much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel already, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, you can follow me at POC252. That's P-O-K-252 on Twitter slash X. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The Warriors host the Chicago Bulls tomorrow tomorrow or later today, probably for you guys by the time you're listening to this. Uh, so hopefully they can continue their momentum from this blowout win against the Bucs uh, with the Bulls and then, of course, the San Antonio Spurs over the weekend. Thanks, guys.